Kentucky basketball, despite their talent, has been a little up and down this entire season. However, there are a few things that they need to do that if they accomplish in the postseason, they're going to have a lot of success. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Daw. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be giving you five different things that Kentucky basketball needs to do in order to have success this postseason. Also, we're going to take a look at Torvik, Bart Torvik's website, and going. we're going to be asking the question, can Kentucky basketball possibly, just possibly, get that two seed? Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you've not subscribed already on either podcast or on YouTube, would greatly appreciate it if you went ahead and did that. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Also, before we dive into today's episode, I just want to remind you guys, if you have not already clicked the link in the description on previous episodes to go join our ESPN Bracket Challenge, I would absolutely love for you guys to join. I believe we've got 30 people in that bracket pool now. Join up. It's free. You can do it really easily. Just put in a bracket. Uh, you can submit the Wildcats as your pick to win the national championship. Uh, championship. You can pick somebody else, but I'm really looking forward to running that back with you guys after doing it a couple of years in a row. All right. So today, I believe there are five different things that Kentucky basketball needs to do in order to have success in the postseason. Now, obviously, sometimes teams can play pretty perfect games and it will end up coming down to a last second shot, a Hail Mary, if you will, that the opponent hits and there's just nothing that you can do about it. You can play a very, very good game on both sides of the ball against a really good opponent and still find yourself on the losing end. However, I think if Kentucky sticks to these five different things, they're going to have a lot of success. Uh, Most of these things in here um, are not the ones that kind of go without saying. Obviously, Kentucky needs to continue to shoot well on offense as they have all season long. There's one in here um, that's that's kind of a given. Um, It's actually the most important one. I'm going to do these and rank them from least important to most important here. Um, But the Kentucky Wildcats, I think, again, if they if they get some of these things done that some of them that they don't do particularly well, I think they're going to win some games starting here at the very top. The least important thing, but also one of the most important things out of this, obviously, because it's in the five here, Kentucky needs to do a good job of protecting the rim without Fouling. If you go and look at Kentucky's Ken Palm numbers, they're actually pretty solid at protecting the rim in conference play. They were fourth in the SEC in two point defense, and they were third. They are third nationally in block percentage. They've got a lot of different really tall dudes on this roster that, on occasion, can play really solid rim defense. We're looking at particularly uh, Uganda Onyenzo, who has emerged as Kentucky's primary center over these last few weeks, if they can continue to get that going against some of these teams in the NCAA tournament, I think especially early on, they're going to find success. Why? Because you're going to run into some team in the first round that although they may have some crazy shot-making ability from outside the arc, they're not going to be statistically as efficient, nowhere near as efficient as Kentucky is at taking and making those shots And they're going to try and do some different stuff around the rim to make sure that they can stay in the game. If Kentucky is able to not completely eliminate, but hold down that area of their game, I think they're going to have a lot of success. And if Kentucky ends up making it to the very end of the NCAA tournament against a team like UConn or Houston, they're also going to really need to rely on their rim defense. 
Rim protection defense, I think, is going to be very important without fouling. Do not put these teams on the charity stripe. Second thing here that I want to talk about, and this kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with the charity stripe, don't choke on your easy opportunities. This is something that sometimes Kentucky has struggled with this season, especially late in games where the game has essentially been won, and Kentucky almost seemingly does everything in their power to kind of let the game go awry and let it be a little bit more chaotic than it should be. I'm talking turnovers, missed free throws, missed wide open shots, missed wide open communications on defense. Kentucky has to do a better job of cleaning these things up at the very end of the game. They, they've proven they, they have the ability to do it for a full 40 minutes, but sometimes, sometimes in these big environments, things do kind of break down quicker than I think this team and this program want them to. So not missing your free throws late. And I'm not saying you have to hit every single free throw in the second half. I'm just saying you can't go and take 15 free throws and miss seven of them. You have to be able to go out there, miss six of them for that matter. You have to be able to go out there and execute in these clutch moments. Do not choke whenever given an easy opportunity to score or to make a play or to close the game out for that matter. The final thing here, or excuse me, the third thing here, uh, that I think Kentucky basketball needs to do to have success in the postseason. They need to get Zvonimir Ivasic or Trey Mitchell playing well. And whenever I say playing well, I mean at least playing to their averages. We don't need to see subpar play from the guys coming off of the bench. You can take a look at the most recent game here against Tennessee, a game that Kentucky won 85-81. The bench for the Wildcats minus Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham, is Trey Mitchell, Zvonimir Ivasich, and Aaron Bradshaw, three different guys that can play uh, at that center position. They combined for four fouls, three turnovers, and 0 of 2 from the floor with one total rebound between the three and nine minutes, eight minutes, and two minutes of play. If you're going to have Mitchell out there, even if he is playing through injury, he has to be more effective than he has been since his return. Zvonimir Ivasic, we know his upside. He, in his action, however many minutes he gets, he needs to be as effective as he has, has been in games past. And I'm not asking for his performance against Georgia in his college debut. I'm asking for just a little bit of consistency in the what I assume to be limited time that he gets on the court in the rotation in this postseason. If you can hit, get him to maybe block a shot, grab some rebounds, make a couple of, uh, of important passes, knock down an outside shot whenever he is given a wide open look. And if you're Trey Mitchell, it's pretty similar. He's kind of a glue guy as well. Make those passes. Finish way more effectively at the rim than you have over the past few games. Grab those rebounds if you can. If Trey Mitchell is not healthy, I would look to Zvonimir Ivasic to play a little bit more just simply because of the lack of effectiveness that Mitchell has had on the court over these past few games when he has been unhealthy. So those are my first three things that Kentucky basketball needs to do to have success in the postseason, and I'm ranking these from least important to most important. So getting Ivasic or Mitchell, Mitchell playing at least at an average level I think is going to be very important to kind of bring them alongside this front court rotation with Hugo because there are going to be games where Ugona does not have the answer and somebody needs to step up and make a play in that front court. One of those two guys needs to do it. Let me know what you think about those in the comments below if you're listening on podcast at Locked On UK is where you can give some answers. All right, we're going to continue along here and talk about two more different things Kentucky has to do to have success in the postseason. Before I dive into those, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that has push, pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of all new 2024 Nissan US SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Houston Cougars can only be described as an armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12. They can withstand just about any punch, and you saw that in their Big 12 game against TCU earlier today. 60-45 to was the final score. 
immediately thought whenever I looked at that final score, just how physical and tough and how sustainable this Houston team is. Even when their offense is not going well, they can still get a lot out of this team because of how good their defense is and how reliable their defense is. You can take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. You can shop all of these cars over at NissanUSA.com. Again, that is NissanUSA.com. All right, continuing along here on the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Daw hanging out here with you. Really appreciate you, you guys checking out the show today. If you have not subscribed on either podcast or on YouTube, would greatly appreciate it. Almost to 7,500 subscribers on YouTube, which is just insane to think about. I'm so excited to get to that number. I'm really excited you guys have joined up recently. If you're new to the channel, what's up? Glad to have you. If you're old to the channel or there's the podcast feed, and I know some of you have been watching for quite some time now, really appreciate you checking us out. And again, I want to remind you guys, ESPN Tournament Challenge, it's going to be linked in the description of both the podcast and the YouTube episodes. All you got to do is click that link and join up. It's going to be a lot of fun in that bracket pool. 30 people already. I believe we had 50 last year. Doesn't necessarily matter the size of the group, but again, if you want to get in on it, it's free. It's going to be super awesome. And again, links is in, in the description. I would encourage you to go check it out. So, we've got five things Kentucky basketball needs to do to have success in the postseason. We've gone through three. Protect the rim without fouling, don't choke on easy opportunities, and get Zvonimir uh, Ivasic or Trey Mitchell performing well. Here are two more things that I believe Kentucky needs to do to have success and win in this postseason, both in the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament. They need to rebound better on both sides of the floor, and in turn... I think that means they don't allow second chance points. Again, you can head over to Ken Palm to look at Kentucky stats here, and this is something that they don't do very well. They're 172nd on offense and offensive rebound percentage, which is right about average, but it's 10th in the SEC if you look at conference-only stats. If you look on the defensive side of the floor, Kentucky is 227th in offensive rebound percentage, meaning they give up a lot of second chance opportunities. It's gotten better in conference play, it's just it is sixth in the SEC, so that is above average in the Southeastern Conference. But still, this team does not do a really good job of rebounding. But I believe against some of these top seeds, it's going to be a crucial priority of the Wildcats to not give up second chance points and to give themselves second chance opportunities as well. We know how good this offense is more possessions, more points. They're going to be effective most of the time. If you look at the most recent game against Tennessee, I think this is a perfect example of just how important it is to grab some of these rebounds. Kentucky and Tennessee, 85-81 was the final score in Knoxville to close out the regular season. Wildcats out-rebounded the Tennessee Volunteers both on, or excuse me, on defense, but fell short just by four rebounds on offense. Kentucky grabbed 11 offensive rebounds to Tennessee's 15 and the Wildcats grabbed 31 defensive rebounds as opposed to Tennessee's 22 defensive rebounds. You have to be able... Oh, by the way, statistically, both those percentages for for the Wildcats, 33% on offense and 67.4% on defense, were both higher percentages than Tennessee's. While they grabbed four more offensive rebounds, Kentucky statistically was doing a better job getting rebounds on both sides of the ball, actually. So I so I was correct there whenever I, whenever I said that. But it was so important for Kentucky for, I would say, the, from the start of the second half to, I would say, the four- or five-minute mark towards the end of the game, for them to rebound the basketball on defense – to prevent Tennessee from getting the ball back in Dalton Connect's hands. And they ended up using those possessions and turning them into points that at one point, actually at various points, if I'm not mistaken, gave them a double-digit lead and therefore helped them close it out after a helter-skelter type of ending. Rebounding the ball on both ends of the floor is going to be very important against these top seeds like Tennessee, like a Houston, a UConn, or a Purdue. 
And I understand that Kentucky doesn't necessarily have the experience nor the physicality, the weight, just the raw weight with some of their front court players to do this effectively. And sometimes it's honestly just the way the ball bounces. There have been a few games this season where the Wildcats have played and done pretty solidly trying to rebound the basketball, but the ball just bounces in an awkward spot. Kentucky's not in position where they expected it to be, and that's it. That's all she wrote. I've continued to say this uh, off air, and I think I've said it a couple of different times on air. If the Kentucky Wildcats had uh, had Oscar Sheepway on this team, it would be very difficult for them to lose games. Just, just, just straight up. You're not going to out-rebound Kentucky. You're not going to out-shoot them. You're not going to out-play them from outside or inside because Oscar Sheepway would give you everything this team lacks. Veteran presence, rebounding, aggression at the rim. Consistent aggression at the rim, I should say. This team would dominate. But unfortunately, they don't have Sheepway. So they're going to have to step up themselves and make plays. Grab those defensive rebounds. You can't have your guards out-rebounding your front court players every single night. It just can't happen like that. You're not going to be able to sustain that. And I think Kentucky knows that, to be honest with you. But grabbing rebounds, crucial. And then the final thing here, and I think this is the most important, and this is your gimme here. This is something that has been happening all season. And I think Kentucky needs to really put a focus on. The Wildcats need to keep Antonio Reeves going. He, so far this season, has proven to be way more consistent than he was a year ago. He's one of the best scorers, not just in this conference, but in the SEC. And his outside shooting, while very good, has not been the focal point of his game this year. It has been getting to the rim and finishing with effectiveness. You look at that game against Kansas State, I'll actually go ahead and and pull this box score up after Kentucky lost 75-69 to in the th- round of 32. Antonio Reeves, 0 of 5 from inside the arc, 1 of 10 from outside, 1 of 15 from the floor in, I believe, yes, 30 minutes of play. That cannot happen again. Point, just straight up, point blank, cannot happen again. Kentucky has way too good of a chance to make a deep run for a a random poor shooting performance to take them out. Reeves has, again, proven to be consistent all season long, and he's going to have to step it up here over these next few games that Kentucky plays. Kentucky could only play two more games this season. They could finish 23-10. and 10. They could lose in their first, first round of the SEC tournament, and they could lose in the first round of the NCAA tournament. If they want to go further, obviously there are great pl- ball players on this club. Dillingham, Shepard, DJ Wagner, Justin Edwards is rounding into form. Ivasich has a high ceiling. But Antonio Reeves has been the anchor, the consistent scorer, He's going to have to provide consistent points. And I'm not sitting here begging for insane shooting splits. It kind of goes back to what I'm saying about Ivasich and Mitchell. Just hit your averages. Because your averages are better than most in college basketball. Reeves shooting 44.5%, excuse me, 44% from deep. Shooting 55% from inside the arc, which is insane. You need to have some consistency from your leading scorer, and I really, really do hope that he's able to lock it in here. So those are the five things that I believe Kentucky basketball needs to do in order to have success in the postseason. Let me know what you think in the comments below or, again, on socials at Locked on UK. Interesting question here to wrap up the show. Is it even possible for Kentucky basketball to get a two-seed in the NCAA tournament? We're going to answer that question here in just a second. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. 
What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. You can keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing television that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports, from March Madness to the NBA to the MLB and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. You can check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. That is Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, wrapping up the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. I'm going to give you guys really quickly an update here, although it will not matter uh, by the time pretty much I guess this episode is up. This is what I am looking at in real time. Texas A&M up 35-31 at halftime on Ole Miss. This is the game that we're going to be monitoring, seeing how uh, it, it plays out to see who Kentucky plays tomorrow. And then there is one more game that I'm monitor- monitoring. Iowa State versus Kansas State. Cyclones up 26-22 with three and a half minutes left in the first half. Why am I looking at Iowa State right now? Well, it has a lot to do with the fact that Iowa State is currently a two seed in the latest ESPN bracketology. And that is the team that is ranked just above the Wildcats when you look or excuse me, they are ranked as, oh, I messed this up. Iowa State is ranked as the as a three seed, the top three seed, narrowing in on a two seed. Kentucky is right behind them on that three seed line. And if you go and look at Lenardi's rankings, he, he ranks the top 16 teams in order, not just on their seed line as well. Uh, Iowa State is ninth. Kentucky is 10th. So we're looking at here Kentucky's potential opponent, or tomorrow in the SEC tournament. And we are also looking at Iowa, or excuse me, Iowa State, who is pushing to get that two seed alongside the Kentucky Wildcats if they make a run in the Big 12 tournament. Now, the question here is, even if Iowa State plays well, can Kentucky get a two seed? Well, I want to head over to our friends over at Bart Torvik. I say friends, they don't actually know us, but they have a team cast thing, as we have discussed here on the show before, and it allows you to predict the not just the entire season, but also the postseason, and now that the regular season is over, we get to see where Kentucky would be if they win the SEC tournament. According to Torvik, if Kentucky wins their first game, against Texas A&M, they win their second game against Alabama, and then they win their third game 
against the Tennessee Volunteers. I plugged all of this in here. I will hit submit and see what the model says. Kentucky at that point would be 9-5 and five in quad one games, and they would be just outside the two-seed line as the best three-seed. And it's actually pretty funny. If you look at the stats here, I believe their stats are comparable to, um, to Creighton and Marquette who are right there uh, underneath, or above, rather, the Wildcats, which I think is kind of funny. But Kentucky would be right there, barely, barely, barely outside of the two-seed line. And I still think, I still think, even if this happens, I think if this happens and Kentucky's able to beat Alabama and Tennessee... I think Kentucky would have a better shot at this than even the computer models think. Nine quad one wins. You're coming into the tournament hot. Uh, something that has been discussed on social media recently is how much is the NCAA tournament going to take into account the committee, I should say. How much are they going to take into account the fact that teams like Kansas are severely injured right now? By the way, if you didn't see it, they lost to Cincinnati by 20 in the first round of the Big 12 tournament. Um Funny to me, personally. Uh, but how much are they going to take that into account when seeding these injured teams? Because I'll guarantee you, Calipari should make an argument. Or I, I, I think that he should make an argument. I can almost guarantee you that he will make an argument for Kentucky, who has essentially not been healthy all year. And they've been able to win games, and they've been able to, to play just fine despite that. So I think there's going to be a little bit of that factor in, into it if this is the scenario that plays out. And to be honest with you, I think that getting that two seed, uh, I, it, after looking at some of these different draws, it may not be as important as we really think because some of these some of these six seeds may honestly be a little bit weaker, in my opinion. Some of these six seeds may be weaker than some of these seven or tens. Some of these seven or tens, Florida, I'm looking at, and they, they, I, do, I don't want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Nope, 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 nope. Don't want to touch it. Don't want to play it. No, sir. I will, I will gladly take San Diego State. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Let's say here, though, that Kentucky loses their first round game. Texas A&M is currently up on Ole Miss at halftime, and I don't know the outcome of that game yet, so let's just say they lose to Texas A&M in their first round at a neutral site. If I'm not mistaken, Kentucky would then be 6-6 six and six in quad one, and they would drop to a four seed. They would drop from what, what they currently are, which is the second best three seed, to the second best four seed. They drop a whole clean seed line. Three different SEC teams, by the way, uh, on that four seed line, Alabama and Auburn. Um, that's not going to happen. You're not going to have three different teams from the same conference on the four seed line. If anything, Kentucky would be a three seed. Um, Kansas is a four seed. Illinois is a three seed. Yeah, K Kentucky would be a three seed in that scenario. They'd be the best out of those three teams in the conference. I highly doubt the selection committee lets that happen. So there you have it. Um, the computer model thinks it's barely out of reach for the Wildcats. I still think it's in reach because of a few different factors in play. Going to continue to monitor these games. Obviously, we're going to talk about tomorrow's matchup whenever this game actually uh, ends uh, finishes, I should say, between A&M and Ole Miss. And I think that's going to do it, though, for today's episode of Locked on Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore, and you can follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked on Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and God bless. Thank you.